Hey guys, this is Maui Snake, and today I'm going to be going over who the F is Hampus. Because that is the question that people keep asking, and I need to know. I need to know. You need to know. We need to know who this guy is. So basically, Hampus is the in-game leader for NIP, if you guys were unaware. Today, they took down Big in a decent upset victory. I wouldn't say it was uh, as shocking as the Astralis victory, but nonetheless, it was not foreseen by many. And uh, all in all, I think Hampus did a great job. Uh, statistically, as if you see here, he didn't actually have the best stats, but he did have pretty decent stats. And as the in-game leader, you'll see that his style of play actually is what enables him to make some of the calls that he does. So, they're all talking about their favorite Red Bull fa flavors before the game. Hampus likes Kiwi. So, we're learning more about Hampus with every passing moment. Tizian likes the yellow flavor, which is goat tier, according to Nock. ZTR likes blueberry. Tizian bait, trying to bait them, because I think Red Bull is, in fact, a sponsor of Big, saying which is the worst. And it's a trick question, because there is none, of course. But the real answer is sugar-free. <laughs> All right. So we're going to hop into this one. And early on, you will see that Hampus plays the B-Site quite a bit. But they're pretty mobile. And so what he does in the very first round here is he goes for a little bit of a boost for Nock. If you guys were unaware, since they lower the balcony actually on Mirage, which has been quite a while now, you can actually stand right here. You don't even have to crouch. And then if a player jumps from here with good timing and pretty standard crouch jump procedures, you actually can get onto Balcony relatively quickly. And you'll see that NIP love to use that throughout the rest of this game. So Hampus in this round here, he's letting everybody else be pretty aggressive. He's more or less being the rotator in this round, but he has, a interestingly enough, a nade and a kit. And so he'll make his way over on a rotation, just making sure that these angles are cleared out. Shooting out the vent to give a little bit of a distraction. They are aware that Xantaras is in this general area. And actually, what Hampus does there is he doesn't really commit to the fight too early on. He actually enables Plopsky, who was coming up con there, who was able to shoot Xantaras in the side of the head. He just took his attention away from that duel for long enough there, which is very experienced play, knowing how to use your teammates and the such. They'll dominate out the new... The firebox position, smoke on the bomb, and we'll watch this from Tabson's point of view here, as Hampus just sticks it. He's just in the smoke, and then he does get the kill, Tabson, so he's happy about that a little bit, but he is definitely unhappy that he lost the round to the sneaky-beaky-like Hampus. And yes, he continues to be very sneaky-beaky-like. The way I have heard Hampus described from other teams and pro players is that this guy is probably one of the more... He's kind of like the just one of the most annoying people to play against. And you'll see why, especially on the T side here. And so, early on, he'll start towards B w alongside Plopsky. You'll see that these two will work together uh, quite a bit, actually. And this is actually the more or less the spot that he's been playing for a lot of his time on NIP. I think people maybe wondering did ztr take over anybody's spot did he make anybody move but no he pretty much just took twist spots but nip they have very mobile and dynamic defenses they change up quite a bit in their positions here and you see that hampus here just felt like he was allotted this space towards catwalk and that he takes this ladder position just because he can still going for a couple of just info peaks there are some nades being thrown by big here and all in all, this is just a good off angle, and with good timing, he does catch out Xantras. And this is a nice little cheeky play from him as he just jumps down and finds a second. That's a kill he probably isn't supposed to get, but because he uses that little movement trick right there, he does, in fact, find a second in a very tough spot. I mean, and if he dies there, that's actually really big for his team because then it's three alive for big. They could probably split Plopsky on that B bomb site. It would have been very difficult, but you'll see here Hampus on the anti-eco. He's just not shy about really going for these fights here. Goes for the nade. A lot of damage on that. Just kind of going for the fights. Really nothing too special about this, I would say. Um, you know, 
if he dies right there, I think NIP are just fine with that. You know, they're just like, okay, well, you know, they just hit some deagle shots. It's fine. All in all, it's a situation that really was never going to get out of hand for NIP. And all in all, Hampus so far, I mean, there's not, not too much to say. I mean, it, he pretty much kind of gives you the very standard play early on in this one. Jumps towards Balcony, though, into B Apartments. And along with Plopsky, who's holding a flash, you'll see that Hampus here just wants to get aggressive. And this is where he's starting to take a little bit of, of initiative, just getting in the faces of Big. And this kind of feels to me like a little bit of a read in that it seems like they assume that Big don't really care too much about going towards B on their defaults early in these rounds. And you'll see that this really pays off for him, the fact that he was able to read this. Or whether it was a read or it was just trying to get a worse gun involved on a round like this or just trying to take some initiative either way it works out and now Hampus plays a waiting game he hears Xantares cross here he actually doesn't go for the shot there as he wants to get the second kill because the thing about trying to get Xantares there is that it's going to be kind of a labored kill you know you don't know for sure whether or not you get it but when he waits that, that second kill is going to be free every single time. And he takes the fight against Xantares, maybe a little bit ill-advised, given that he isn't playing the numbers game in terms of it's a 5v2. But at the same time, with how dire the situation is for Big, keeping the pressure on isn't really too bad of an idea either. And I kind of explained that yesterday with my ZTR one, where, you know, in those kind of man-up situations, the fundamental right play is to usually back off of the angle, but continuing to pressure it and, and just taking the fight because it's an awkward one nonetheless. Uh, it, it's very unlikely that that situation is going to get out of hand for NIP. There's 30 seconds left. They're in a 5v2. Man, if it goes to it down to a 4v2, you're not really stressing the issue all too much. But that is kind of how those crazy you know, 2v5 clutches happen, that people in the beginning of them take a few too many risks. So here, Hampus just going for a standard defense with Plopsky here. He's playing the get-right position. That's what we, at least we call it in America. And notice that he's just kind of throwing some decent util to slow these players down really good nade as it lands right in the corner there just perfect angle on that one and then now just takes up picks up where plopsky left off it's really an anti-eco not too much to say and even though again it's kind of a does he need to jump up like that can't you just wait him wait for them to come out there's no real reason that he should expect that big is going to out duel him in a situation like that So, 5 0 start. And really, Hampus just kind of more or less being a little bit aggressive, kind of being a win more player in some of these circumstances. But at the same time, he is doing a really solid job here towards this side of the map. But this is a round where he gets caught out. Good flashes from Big actually make that pretty difficult. That brief moment where, his, where he's kind of blind, he just kind of is out in the open and he was holding this angle, hoping for somebody to jump out. And that's one of those things where if you're the the main B defender, this is probably one of Hampus's worst rounds in that he kind of just guesses and really postures as if he's going to be getting these kills. But Big can be really explosive on their B hits. And sometimes you can do a lot of things correctly, but unless you're playing like the actually 100% optimal play to try to defend, it, you can get caught out like that. It happens. Um, like, the arguments there for what he could do differently are probably use a little bit more util. And this time around, he'll be he'll boost Nock, who actually kind of messes up the jump. But you'll see that Nock this time, I mean, he makes it after a while, and now he can post up on this angle relatively early without giving up too much. And it's a little bit of a, a shame that Nock doesn't get that one. But actually, Hampus jumps up on the barrel there, and he was pretty ready to help, help out. But he gets a little bit complacent and just tries walking away from the angle, which I think is a little bit ill-advised. Because now it puts his team in a very awkward situation, as you'll see. And Nock tries to, has to try to defend himself there. But really, just a non... A very unsteady diet of different little plays towards B. As now we've seen NIP play with two riflers there. One rifler. Hamp is very pushed up on Catwalk. And then Plopsky's all the way back on B. And then we saw that round that they boosted Nock up. And then... And then that doesn't work either. But like... NIP are constantly shifting their defenses just every single round and this time he goes for an aggressive play towards mid he misses out on that one kill and now it kind of puts his team in a slightly awkward situation but they are able to get themselves out of this one thanks to some great play from knock this isn't a knock player point of view but I do want to show how that round concludes for you guys.
as that as knock was able to recover the situation pretty nicely or at least just you know he stems the bleeding so this time around you'll see that it's actually hampus that gets boosted up and so we've seen hampus boost two players up and he gets boosted up himself overall it's just it's just constantly changing for the NIP defense. It is so difficult to play against this team on Mirage because you just never know what's coming. And Hampus is probably they probably have 15 gun round setups at least. And each one is pretty just stand like none of them feel too crazy is the thing. And that's kind of something I've always I've noted about NIP is that they rarely push the envelope in terms of their style, but they just have so many ways to play kind of that similar style that it works for them. And this is actually kind of a rare mistake you'll see from Big in terms of layering utility, although it, it, it's not really that bad. So you'll see the one molly kind of landed in this section, and then they want to throw another molly here. It's kind of like having two mollies for the same job, very committal on that one angle, and because of that, Hampus will be able to actually take advantage because now they don't have a Molotov for him on the balcony itself. So this is a free kill on the Tizian right there. And then he can just play with himself and Plopsky just holding the smoke right there. And then Plopsky gets to get the final kill there as he swings out. But really, Hampus and Plopsky with a very good connection there. Nock found the opening pick towards middle there. I think he was dry challenged by Serson. And then the just defense from them. It's just a really solid defense overall in that the both of these players here can play a range game, and they can use their utility very well. Um, the angle from Hampus is a little bit more risky, you would say, but the thing is that Plopsky can give him so much in intel in terms of what he's able to see, and this is kind of something that I would say, like, Enz, for example, did very well when they were actually a good team, is that they they played these kind of long-range angles, and it, it helped that they were using the AUG a lot of the time, but it, it allowed the kind of secondary player on the site who isn't taking the contact to actually have a lot of impact in knowing what fights were coming a lot of the time. It allows him to have great visualization in terms of what's going to happen next. Um, even though they themselves don't have info, it's just a, a man, it's kind of a man on the radio taking the fights and a man just listening in. So Hamp is here. Anti-eco, nothing too crazy about this one. Just wants to get involved. And I, that's kind of why I said like preface this earlier with like they're okay with Hampus dying in situations like that because any team should be able to handle a two v four versus versus pistols and it's a it looks a little like eco hungry and it, it is it is don't get it wrong that is a little eco hung, hungry and you'll see that some of some but very few of the best 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 players in the world like most cautious conservative ones won't actually go for those fights but Hampus you know he's got a little bit of a flair here and there. So, Hampus throws a flash over mid to try to help out with the fight earlier on. There's kind of a misclick, I think, from Xantara's there towards towards Balcony. And now, once again, a very different setup. We see that Plopsky is here on B by himself. We see Nock is here playing to help out the B fight. And then we have ZTR playing close. Hampus playing under Balcony. And then Rez is playing behind triple. And what this setup does for, for NIP is it allows, basically, the first contacts to never be on Hampus. I mean, he is kind of watching this Balcony run out. So he is actually, he is actually, in fact, covering something, although Rez is kind of watching it too. So it's not like this is, this is kind of some overlapping crossfire here. But because of that, because of its kind of out of meta style in that you wouldn't really expect there to be players like set up in a situation like this, you'll see the Hampus is able to capitalize. So we see that Rez is making his presence very known and he's very, being very obvious about it. At the fact that he's at toll booth he's taking shots he's staying up there probably longer than most players at toll booth would probably feel comfortable and then we'll see that he's just making a lot of noise like he is so he is trying to sell this bait so hard this fake and so now we'll see hampus taking next contact and keto he's just not quite ready for it because he doesn't expect there to be a player there as actually ztr is also making his presence known simultaneously and just the fact that there is an additional player on this bomb site this was really almost it's never going to be going right for big unless they hit headshots immediately and so even though even though he does get taken down you can see that just the the sheer manpower here actually really worked in favor of N of nip although big is able to recover the situation uh, i think thank you thank you Sirson, for winning out this 1v2 we'll, we'll you know what we'll give you guys we'll watch it a little bit because there's just this was kind of a weird round for me in that he gets this one shot and plopsky has the option here to throw his smoke at the top of connector and he actually just decides to dry face it which i feel like 
is so out of meta that Cersei shouldn't expect it. But at the same time, the angle that Plopsky, or that Plopsky is peeking from is likely the same angle that, that Cersei going to be holding anyways. And it's kind of one of those, in theory, he shouldn't be holding you. But also, in theory, he's holding the same angle you're going to peek from regardless. Because he's holding for... He's holding you to swing from Tollbooth, essentially. So here we go. Hampus going for the boost onto Knock there. And you'll see this is a little bit of a recycled setup that we saw earlier in the game. But Hampus... Just, once again, just kind of... Actually, this time around, he just sets him up. And this is actually a pretty standard setup for a lot of teams in that it's a it's kind of a 3-1-1. One, one. Um, this is just a more eccentric one because the op here at Balcony can just get a lot done. Because he holds this angle here, he actually has so much vision on what is going on in apartments. I'm pretty sure, like, anybody that has watched a Mirage game in the last four years has seen this already. So I don't need to explain it too much, but the logic behind it is just... In terms of what everybody else is doing, is kind of more interesting, I, I would say, where it's a heavy A side setup where Plopsky is re is going to end up being responsible for window in most situations here, but Hampus actually decides to change it, which is why this is so this becomes like extra tricky. That NIP they do these little tweaks on these rounds where a lot of teams would do actually kind of a, a three one one, but instead they they kind of make it a two two one despite that. And so he falls off of the angle here, just going for a little bit of spam. And this, in turn, kind of sets up sets up Knock and actually sets up Plopsky in a way because people wouldn't expect him to be actually in the ladder necessarily. So he's able to capitalize, but this just gets really messy. And and sometimes this is just kind of how Mirage fights go, where everybody want you could see that everybody on NIP really wanted to connect and like actually do something there but because of the smokes in multiple locations simultaneously it, it's just very hard for nip to actually connect in some of these situations like they couldn't actually just go for that full-on mid mid hold because of the utility it segments the fights as, and that's actually just more credit to big because they were able to do that so hampus there just kind of a a victim of the system and the hit from big it's why you just can't have flawless halves in this game. It's not that... I mean, even though NIP is generally playing this a lot better in this half thus far, at the end of the day, you just can't... You can't beat good smokes sometimes when, when if they counter your setup. And so this time around, Hampus, he's just looking for something, looking for a return kill here or there. And he doesn't actually get gifted it, but he will move to CT here, changes up his position, which is a pretty veteran play in a clutch. You just don't want to re-peak... That same thing twice. And actually, he catches Xanteras off. And now it's just down to a one-on-one -on -one between Cersei and Hampus. But Hampus just kind of swings into the angle as he maybe expects that Cersei might fall off of it, try to peel off. And it's one of those, again, like out of meta kind of things that Hampus does where he's so annoying. So that might look so simple, but actually what's going on there is that Hampus knows that Cersei has to plant the bomb. He knows that there's still a lot, there's some time on the clock, and Cersei is going to feel the pressure of the fact that I have to plant the bomb, but there is a player here. So you think in those kinds of moments, that's when a player like Cersei may lose some focus. And sometimes it's like, why does like the backseat gamer would say, why doesn't he just wait for the plant? But just as just as you could say that, if Hampus swings out, if Hampus swings out and he kills him as Cersei is trying to go back to get the bomb, people will say, why wasn't Cersei ready for the peak? And that's basically just one of those things where it's just like, the, like despite how kind of theoretically correct some plays are, like everybody in a way, and this is a tangent, is very results oriented in how they view this game. Like there's a right way that Cersei's supposed to play it, and there's a right way that Hampus is supposed to play it, but like each of them are countering the the actually like right way. It's never it's never that clear cut in this game. There's a lot more depth than than just doing what is right. So basically here we have Hampus just jumping off Catwalk, fully reading that. And that doesn't look like a particular lineup for the Molotov, but it will get Xanteras off of the bomb site. And you'll see that this is really a 5v3. They should be in complete control of this. But actually, it really turns on its head because what's going on here is that Cersei has actually lurked through middle on this round. And Hampus, you know, he's trying to make something happen, but he just gets flanked by that 
by what happened with Cersei in there. And at this point, that's when Tizian is most activated, and he was being so patient for this whole round. But at the end of it all, actually, it just goes the way of Big and Cersei opening this whole thing up with that kill from Catwalk, and then the rest of the players from Big now in the confusion of the round as NIP is trying to just retake but also care about their flank. It's, it's just like it's time to create chaos, and that's exactly what and I uh, big do in that situation. So CT side player, Hampus had a really good half overall, but I think it's very tough to nail his play style on CT side. And I think that's, I mean, that's not like what that's not necessarily why people on Twitch are saying who the f is Hampus all the time. But at the but at the same time. It's because he just changes what he's doing so frequently that it's very hard to actually get a pulse on what is this player. Because he is just showing constant versatility in these rounds. He was, let's just talk about it briefly. He was the anchor in a situation where he had to solo B actually by himself. He was the he was kind of the anchor at A under balcony at times. He was Sometimes the support player in that he helped boost up a player towards balcony. Sometimes he was the player that was set up as the star because he was getting to, getting to play balcony. And sometimes he's a fast rotator and he gets to play cat, um, cat in ladder room. So he just gets to do everything. And it, it's it's kind of, it's just the system that NIP run is just so versatile. And it gives teams so many different looks that it's very annoying because you don't really, there's, even when you're against players that have this expectation of being that super solid anchor think electronic or magisk or twist in pit for example you just know they're going to be there and even though they're very good at it it's not necessarily annoying in the same sense that hampus is where it's just what is he doing it's like the question what is he doing all the time what like why is he here now it's like that's what's running through the minds of a lot of these players as they play against him why is hampus under balcony all of a sudden you know and so a nice little fake from nip overall but it doesn't really actually get the job done until ztr gets that that uh that clutch it actually did fake big in that in that it pulled the rotations but now we'll see that hampus starts to be just really annoying and you could see kind of the foreshadowing there in that he just kind of dances with them at b apartments and then he falls back to a ramp it's just he's all over the place in these kinds of games so Hampus now, he's smoked off at B Apartments. There's nothing really too special about this. But he does throw a window smoke for B. And this is kind of making Tizian think this may, in fact, be a hit towards the side. So he rotates back. And so you'll see how Hampus pulled the rotation. Not necessarily completely because of his smoke, but the fact that the pressure alongside it made Tizian think that probably he shouldn't take that just fight by himself there. And Hampus there, there's just, there's just simply not a hell of a lot for him to do uh, as he does just kind of jump out wildly but it, it's trying to create some crosshair disruption in that maybe the mac 10 does have better jumping accuracy and then i mean it does have decent jumping accuracy so he can just kind of jump around like that and if he just hits a nice shot that feels like one of the only ways for him to get into that one with knock and so now we see here hampus just kind of defaulting towards b but everybody on his team dies already so not a lot for him to do in this round either and he just gets executed from above So, just Glocks, but somehow he manages to get a kill as they scale towards middle. And really, again, not a hell of a lot to say here. So, top mid smoke comes out from Hampus. He actually makes his way towards B Apartments again. He does default here. So, even though I say that he's a little bit annoying and pesky, he does default consistently in the same spot. And this is a very cool strategy from NIP in that they are feigning a lot of pressure towards this side of the map. And you'll see on the radar that certain... Sersen's already considering the rotation towards B. Tabson's kind of already peeking towards middle, thinking that this is going to be a full-on B hit. But NIP are actually going for a split right now towards the A bomb site as Plopsky tries to make some presence. But like this is basically the winning play from Tabson right here in that he mollies underpass, knowing that it was a fake towards B. And because of that, he can now just take this free 1v1, knowing that one player is out there. And also, his player... Uh, and I think Xanterez was a top mid looking for the fight simultaneously. And really, this play just gets completely read by NIP, and Tabson continues to read it in that he takes down Hampus as well. So this is kind of a... This felt more like a call out of spawn that just doesn't go right for NIP. It wasn't really a default or anything. This was just... They knew what they were going to run, and they tried it. And it's just because NIP right here... 
this is kind of that's kind of the typical twist or not twist the typical hampus thing to do that if you kind of lose a string of rounds just take the guesswork out of a round by by going for a more set play and we saw that actually when they played inferno from ztr's perspective that they let that this is just the classic campus call a couple defaults they don't work out although those were ecos but then you know let's get some momentum back with a set play that we we trust and so again this is where hampus can be just super annoying just decides to jump into window you know it, there's no nades to support him it doesn't work quite work out but actually they end up winning this round and it's just the added chaos from him doing something like that probably did contribute in some in a some fashion to why big couldn't couldn't actually pick this one up and so we see actually this way the way that plopsky and knock are playing this one it's just again it's so tricky it's so tricky it's so sneaky the way they're just both around triple you don't you know that tizzy doesn't know they're both around triple right now he knows that plopsky is there and now that he heard plopsky actually jumping into ct it actually felt like this was pretty possible for tizzy to win at one point but plopsky just with that perfect jump peak there it, Tizian probably had to just hit the shot on him jumping there, which just wasn't going to happen. So, NIP, they're just so pesky. They're like, they're really just, ah, oh, they're so, like, just watching them just kind of makes my, like, it just, it's like a creepy crawly on my skin because it's just like, God, it's just so annoying. It's just so annoying to play against this team. It doesn't, it's not like, it's not pretty all the time either for NIP. They just keep doing things that just make you uncomfortable. They take, you out of their comfort zone, but they are in control of it. So ZTR gets that pick towards A. Hamp is just throwing support, some support nades there towards middle right now as they try to scale. But now that they have a 5v4, we can actually see how Hampus wants to use some of his mid-rounding prowess in that they smoke top con, they smoke window. Usually, this would... If you're big right now, you assume one of two things. You think you think either they're going for a cat B split or you think that they're going to be going up con into an A, a pinch later. Given that... Sersen has already pushed this deep into Palace. Keto isn't really sure of what's happening here. And Xantarez, he's backing off, kind of thinking this might be the cat split. But then Tizian actually is just kind of by himself here. And uh, that won't help him out too much. But they're doing a 2-2 split overall. Hampus just trying to find yet another just opening in this round as he makes his way into window as the, the pinch is commencing. And so this is kind of... It's, it's kind of a hard lurk, but you can see how just awkward this is. He just didn't expect Xantras to not be fighting there or to be backing away so quickly. And so he does get caught out. But again, he just, like, even Xantras in that situation, you could see was flustered by the way he was jumping around, pulling his gun out, that he just didn't expect Hampus to do something like that. And so I'm not showing you guys many kills of Hampus, but I think just from the way he's playing and how it feels so, you know, illogical at times, that it, it actually is just so frustrating. So here we go, boosting Rez here, and actually Rez will actually get the angle on a Sersen who is more or less holding a top on top of the connector there. This is kind of like, he maybe could have been a little tighter, yes, but at the same time, you don't really expect a player to just boost in the middle of the smoke, in the middle of the open. But that's exactly what Hampus and Rez do. They just have all these little tricks, little tricky tricks. And so now Hampus makes his way up Khan at the perfect time. And you can see that that gap in the, the smoke, although I'm not actually 100% sure if it's intentional because usually sometimes people walk through that a little too far. Uh, it does allow him to get upstairs pretty cleanly there. I th I actually think it, it, it is intentional in that it just blocks off jungle in such a way, in such a fashion that's just creates kind of an awkward engagement for anybody that would want to contest from this position right there. But Hampus now, he moves even more. He came up con, and then he went all the way back to Palace. Like, this becomes unwinnable for Tizian in that how are you supposed to read a player who does something like that? It's just so, it's so all over the place. Hampus just, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to stop moving in a lot of these rounds. Sometimes he'll play with a little bit of pacing, a little bit of, you know, slower tempo. But he just keeps getting into places that are so awkward. And... It kind of feels like how Art wants to do this in the first 20 seconds of a round for Furia. Hampus doesn't mind doing it 50 seconds into a round for NIP. He just wants to make things as confusing and just un uncomfortable as he can for the other team. He's just a, th a constant thorn in their side. It doesn't matter how, how strong you are with your tweezers. You just can't pull him out. 
even when you kill him, it's like the round's already over half the time. So again, he's just being super annoying top mid. He probably could have committed to some of these fights a little bit earlier here, but at the same time, he's just doing a really good job, and, and they really have to commit a lot of manpower. And basically, NIP had no chance of losing this round because he was taking the attention of so many people. And you can see him slouching right here, and he knows he did a job well done. Hampus with the cat smoke in this instance. Just so you guys can see this one. Just a flush cat smoke. Just feigning for a little bit of control there. And now he's in Palace. Like, this guy doesn't calm down. He just chooses a new spot to go every round. And it, if, <laughs> it shows kind of how well drilled NIP are in that they can run so many different types of plays. And they don't have to rely on their default. They have a very deep playbook in terms of just kind of the... the the way they want to run their rounds. Hampus with the molly underneath. The flash is there to try to help his teammates support. Those flashes there just make it awkward for anybody on the site, especially people that are towards Tollbooth here. But overall, they just never could get out. And it's not really not even really worth showing. They just, they just didn't have the right utility to try to stop this. They had the smoke top con smoke jungle as opposed to the stairs and jungle smoke themselves, which usually allows you a little bit more position. And actually, you would usually be favoring if you find an opening pick like that, because you could take ground quickly. But Big were just very, very quick on the rotations there. And that's something that NIP just couldn't handle as they tried to still use this utility. And at that point, you know, do NIP reset? Should they reset? Should they try to fall back? I would say no a lot of the time, just because they use so many smokes. How are they even going to get back into that round? I mean, they already lost... By the time they recognized that Big were there and rotated in, they already had lost a couple of players. So just try to find the, trying, to, trying to find the trades there is not a bad idea by any means. It's just that they don't they don't get the kills. So, smoke towards top con, Molly towards catwalk. You'll see that this time around, he throws a little bit of a run flash here, and that just kind of banks off it to get into ladder room right there. It's a really nice little set pe set flash there. And again, he throws a smoke that actually gives this gap towards the top con area, and he actually spots the head of Cersei, just tags him through the wall, but he knows he did some damage there, so he wants to just keep going for the fight, as he should. And at this point, Big Big really thought this was a B play. You can see that the rotations right now, they had a player in a part, even though they had the player that was in apartments earlier, and the player around Cat, and then Keto was kind of making his way towards B, th this was all NIP actually going back towards A. And Hampus... I think this was kind of a mid-round from him, more so than a than a set piece, in that they weren't really planning to necessarily go here, but because of the kills and the way they went, and how, especially since Hampus got that kill on a Cersei, they just knew that was totally possible. It's very likely that somebody also relayed something at B that we can't do this play right now. And so Hampus, this this made me laugh out loud the first time I watched this POV back. I, I just couldn't believe that he do, this happens. So he gets flash and he knows where the smoke is at top mid. So he just runs in it, right clicks a flash at his feet and just keeps running through smokes like he's gonna get away. Like this guy is just like, he thinks he's God. <laughs> he literally thinks he's God. Like how can he, how can he think that'll work? Like I don't, I don't understand. But at the same time, everybody on his team was going through B apartments anyways. So it doesn't really matter too much and they are able to clean this one up you'll see that the the kills just go the way of nip really not too much to say about it there was no way that um big we're gonna get back into this round but it's just it's just so crazy how much confidence hampus has in in the risks he takes for positioning so here we go underpass little default from him this time around and he's just doing this by his lonesome there is the smoke window which helps him out a lot but now this peak towards catwalk from bench it's just a very strong peak it's it's not only kind of a right eye swing at that but it's just it's a very hard shot and if they have m4s and you have an ak it's just a it's actually just an objectively favorable duel that you should be taking if you uh, are, are looking for mid control because you should take the 50 50 like you should pretty much take the 50 50 with an ak most rounds if you if especially if it's like a headshot angle like that and if an m4 is going to give you that that is a why would you not take a one shot you kill him versus he needs to headshot you twice with an m4 it's, it's just one of those things where there's almost no reason to not take that so hampus here just with the hard lurk here as the rest of the play is going towards b and you'll see here that again he's just being very awkward with the timing and he actually doesn't he actually hears keto but then he hears that keto goes for the cat 
cat play and he actually is kind of deciding between a couple of options here because i think he knows that xanthrus is there but he decides to go for what he thinks is a free kill on keto but keto actually takes him down and so we will watch the rest of this round anyways but all in all plopsky decent awareness but he gets the kill on keto and actually is able to get the one onto Xantra. Xantra has tried playing this waiting game there and it doesn't work out for him. But really, all this was supposed to show is who the hell is Hampus. And I think we kind of know now that the reason it's so hard to pinpoint who he is is because he just keeps changing what he's doing all the time. He is consistently in these kind of slow pressure lurk positions. Whereas I would say like back in the day, there were some hard, there was like hard lurks there was like pr there was pressure lurks and then hampus kind of essentially does that but with really kind of weird timing constantly it, he just consistently will will be so frustratingly and annoying with with how he's making his way his rounds around the map you just never know where he's going to be and it, it becomes so difficult to anti-strat a team like nip when it feels like they're defaulting a lot of the time but they in fact are changing up the default pretty drastically so that's who hampus is hopefully you guys enjoyed this he wasn't and it, this is i don't usually do these kind of lower fragging games but at the same time i just kind of wanted to try something different hopefully you guys still got a lot of uh great information about this hopefully it helps you guys with your just appreciation for the nip game in the future because this team is just so tricky and it's it's like, you have to, to fully appreciate them, I think you have to try to put yourselves in the shoes of their opponents, where the comms will consistently be a little bit more hectic when you're facing a team like this, because you don't really know for certain what is happening all the time. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you guys have been enjoying these. I'm going to keep doing these. I'm going to, for a bit... So you guys can expect some more videos coming up as I just watch these blast games and just things stick out to me. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, like, subscribe, comment. Comment for, I'm just going to do one a day for, for a couple, few days. So enjoy. Peace out. And as always, being toxic is a choice.